a national treasure whose merest mention was dropped out of Indian history books, a colossus in whose name there never were any national celebrations like the Children's Day, nor was he accorded any title such as Father of the Nation. Though this extraordinary man lived and died only for the singular purpose of attaining freedom for his motherland and making her the greatest nation in the world. Why was this most remarkable freedom fighter neglected so deliberately and grossly? Why was he not granted a Bharat Ratna? Of course, we are speaking of none other than Netaji Subhas Chandra Bose. Young Subhas joined Cambridge University. In 1920, after just eight months of studies, he stood forth in one of the toughest exams of that time, namely, the Indian Civil Service exam. But he resigned from the ICS as he chose to stand by his principles and not serve the British. Subhas strongly felt that the freedom could only be obtained by using force of arms, by physically driving out the British. So he espoused the army raised by Ras Bihari Bose, the Indian National Army, IRA. As a strategic thinker, he believed that the British were losing hold on India with the start of World War II and all that was needed was an army of our own to throw them out. The INA received tremendous support after Subhas took its leadership from Ras Bihari Bose. Indians from Malaya, Singapore, Burma, Thailand, Vietnam and several East Indian countries praised the revival of INA and Subhash's total dedication to India's independence. Even some groups from Ceylon, as also some Muslims, who had had initially refused to participate in such activities, changed their minds after listening to Subhas. INA gave honour and dignity of freedom fighters to the ordinary, socially and financially exploited laborers. Thus, he inculcated a community feeling in the people who joined INA. Subhas knew very well that enemy's enemy is a friend and hence he gathered support for the INA from enemies of the British, mainly Germany and Japan. Actually, he took support from all those countries who had never exploited or looted India. Nehru and later Nehru government always sought help of the British, even after independence. On 21st October 1943, Bose set up a provisional Indian government of Azad Hind in Singapore. Eleven countries gave consent to Netaji's oath except India. He said, time has come for three million Indians living in East Asia to mobilize all their available resources including money and manpower. Half-hearted measures will not do. Out of this total mobilization, I expect at least 300,000 soldiers and 3 crores, that is $30 million. People did rise to his exhortation. He did receive an overwhelming support from the Indians for INA so much so that he set up an Azad Hind Bank in Rangoon. On 23rd October 1943, he declared a war against the British for the liberation of our motherland. On 29th December 1943, he hoisted the Indian flag at Andaman and Nicobar Island, which were under the Japanese control during the World War II and initially controlled by the British. Thus, the Indian flag was hoisted from a free Andaman and Nicobar Island by Netaji. Much later, B. R. Ambedkar wondered when the then British Prime Minister Clement Utley transferred the powers to India in 1947. I don't know how Mr. Utley suddenly agreed to give India independence. He told the BBC in 1955, the National Army that was raised by Subhas Chandra Bose. The British had been ruling the country in the firm belief that whatever may happen in the country or whatever the politicians do, they will never be able to change the loyalty of soldiers. That was one prop on which they were carrying on the administration. 
and that was completely dashed to pieces. They found that soldiers could be seduced to form a party, a battalion to blow off the British. Sir Norman Smith, Director, Intelligence Bureau, noted in a secret report of November 1945, the situation in respect of the Indian National Army is one which warrants disquiet. There has seldom been a matter which has attracted so much Indian public interest, and it is safe to say, sympathy, the threat to the security of the Indian Army is one which it would be unwise to ignore. Subhas was also declared one of the eight most dangerous people in India by the British. It's amply evident that Netaji Subhas was perceived as a grave threat by the British as he was popular and could motivate masses to fight a war. The British felt that Azad Hind, Ford or the INA was capable enough to repeat the 1857 revolt. Mr. P. B. Chakraborty, an acting governor, reports that when he asked Lord Atli as to what made him withdraw the British rule from India, Atli cited several reasons, the principal among them being the erosion of loyalty to the British Crown among the Indian Army and Navy personnel as a result of the military activities of Netaji. Atli also mentioned in a discussion that the influence of Gandhiji on the decision of the British to free India was minimal. Have you read any of this in our history textbooks? Why was all this kept out? Why is Netaji's death still a mystery? Why doesn't the government declassify all the files related to Netaji? Is there something more to hide? Equally pertinent, what can we do now to undo the injustice done to Netaji?